You are tuned in to your weekly Sunday morning word broadcast, Rhema Power, with Reverend Ni Bernard Adiakwa, Senior Pastor of Powerhouse Ministries International, a program designed to improve your understanding into the Word of God, bring you practical solutions, and empower you to rise above life's daily challenges. Stay tuned. Hello, precious one. We wish to extend a warm invitation to you to join us for any of our Sunday services at the PMI King's Temple. Our services are specially designed to specifically meet your needs and draw you closer to have fellowship with God in His presence. You are welcome to join us in person at 6.15 a.m. for the morning glory service, at 7.30 a.m. for the second service, which is also streamed live across all our social media platforms, and at 9.45 a.m. for the third service. We also wish to invite you to join us for the Living Mana, a weekday Bible teaching service, which comes off every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and Thursday at 6.30 p.m. in person and online, respectively. On Fridays, we gather before our Father's altar at 6 p.m. to pray and seek His face for divine encounters. The King has a special place for you. Don't come alone. You surely will be blessed by the Word of God. In Jesus' name, God richly bless you. Let me just show you a few things. I call it love facts. Number one, if you say you love God, the first question is, what will you do for God? Your love for God is seen by what you give and do freely and sacrificially even when you receive nothing in return anybody can respond to anybody who gives him things so the test of love is not because the person is necessarily giving you something because when you follow somebody because of what you get from him it is not necessarily love so the test of love is what you will give freely to God even when you will get nothing in return the second your love for God is seen in how much you deeply appreciate the one to whom you owe your life to. So God says, I love you so much. Do you owe God your life? Your love for God is seen in how much you deeply appreciate him because you owe your life to him. I am who I am because of you. I am what I am because of you. You are the reason why I lift my hands. You are the reason why I sing. Yeah. So what will I do for this God? How much do I deeply appreciate this God who has done so much for me? When you want to say, I don't know how much you deeply appreciate how much you deeply appreciate and you owe your love to. Number three, you can assess how much a person will love you by assessing his love for God. I'll explain. If you say God has done so much for you and you love him so much, then if I see the one you owe your life to and how much you love him, it is an indication of how you will treat me. Because I haven't done for you what God has done for you. So if God has done so much for you and he calls you, you don't mind him. You disobey him. You never spend time with him. You don't have time to spend with him. Then me from Choco, who hasn't done so much for you, how would you love me? So if I want to see how you will love me, I want to see how much you love the one you owe your life to. Who has healed you? Who has delivered you? Who has watched over you? Who has fed you and protected you? If that is how you treat him, and you treat him well, then at least I know how much you will treat me also. But if you treat that man so badly, from the beginning of the year, you never call him. The only time he sees you Is when you need something. The only time you are around is on the 31st. The only time you come around is when there's a problem. Then how will you treat your human being who hasn't helped you that much? So when you love somebody, it is a reflection of how you treat other people. Number four, and the final thing, my relationship with the Lord is love-driven, not need-driven. I don't have a relationship with the Lord because I want something from him. I want a relationship with the Lord because I love him. How many of you, if you found a gentleman or a lady, and the only reason why the lady or the gentleman wanted to be with you 
was because of what he or she can get from you. How many of you will want to take the person beyond into a deeper relationship? Nobody wants a relationship with somebody who is always begging and asking and taking things. Our relationship with the Lord must be love driven. I come because I love you. I serve you because I love you. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5 verse 6, it says circumcision or uncircumcision profited nothing but faith which worketh by love. Our faith in God is driven by love. Our service to God is driven by love. Our pain of our tithe is driven by love. Whatever we do going on outreach is driven by love, not by need. And so God is assuring us this is the first and the great commandment. No matter who you are, whether you are born in Choco or you are born in airport, if your primary education is weak, no matter who you are, if your foundation is weak, it is no longer God, it is you. So if you want to be able to have a great future, build a good foundation. If you want to be able to have a great future, do the things that are first, first. Follow the order of priority. Let our lives be in order. And if you make a mistake, correct it and come back. In this year, dig a foundation. A foundation, once it is covered, is no longer seen. But the building and the structure will show what the foundation is like. So today, nobody may be seeing what we do in private. Nobody may be seeing us and acknowledging when we are praying. Nobody may be acknowledging when we are worshipping God. Nobody may be acknowledging when we wake up in the morning and we speak in tongues. But as time goes by, as we begin to grow older, you will begin to see the difference between those who have a good foundation and those whose foundation is weak. A foundation will determine your height and the quality and whether when the rains beats the foundation, whether the building will fall. The first commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Anybody who is in love, there are areas of your life that will be affected. Number one is that your thoughts. When you say you love somebody, do you know what happens? Some way, somehow, the person occupies your mind and your thoughts. When you love God, he begins to fill your mind. He will influence your actions. He will influence your thinking. You've got to learn how to meditate on the word. You've got to learn how to feed on the word. The second thing about anybody who's in love is that he begins to pursue. You see, what you love, you pursue. So I can look at what you spend a lot of your time on. What you passionately want to pursue and I can tell you what you love. If you say you love singing, if you say you love church, if you say you love God, how much do you spend pursuing it? The third thing about love is your quality time for intimacy. When you meet the object of your love, you want to spend time alone with a person. If you love God, this is the first commandment. Thou shalt love the Lord your God. You want to build time with the Lord. You want to build a foundation that will provide for you. You want to build a foundation that will end up in a relationship of permanence. You've got to learn how to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. The fourth way is to give gifts freely. So when you love somebody, you want to minister to the person. If you are still struggling with doing the basic your foundation is weak because when love takes over your life something will begin to happen i'm going to show you three major benefits of loving god turn your bible quickly to luke chapter 7 verse 47 luke chapter 7 let me just show you the benefits of loving god luke chapter 7 verse 47 wherefore i say unto thee her sins which are many are forgiven for she loved much but to whom little is forgiven, the same loved little. Her sins which are many are forgiven because she loved much. This woman didn't come praying for forgiveness. She didn't come asking God for healing. But some way, somehow, her sins 
the past, the things she had done in the past, which was affecting the future and determining the rest of her life, were erased because she learned to love much. You see, it doesn't matter what you have done in the past. Too, because when you begin to love God, maybe you have even killed somebody. You have committed murder. You have done something that is affecting and defining your future. But when you begin to love God, God says, I will erase your past. I will move away the judgment from the past of your sins. And I will give you a new future because you have learned to love. Now I know that you love. There are some of us, some of the things we have done in our past, it seems to be catching up with us. But God is going to deliver us from judgment of past mistakes and curses. He's going to deliver us from the captivity and consequences of our past because we love much. Listen to me, church. When you begin to do the first commandment and you begin to love God with all your heart, your past will be erased. God has a way of making sure that the things you have done in your past, even if you went to prison, even if you did something bad and everybody's against you, God will give you a new beginning. The Bible says that even though you had a bad past, they have been forgiven because you love much you love much i want to announce to you when you come to church and you love much and people are laughing at you they don't know your story they don't know where you are coming from they don't know what you've been through they don't know how god has delivered you and so you love much and you'll be forgiven much in the year 2019 we are going to focus on loving god and our past as a choker our past in this environment will not be able to define us again something new is about to take place in this church people will look at you and not remember your past they knew you as a bad person but the lord will forgive you much because you love much when you come to church and you are dancing when you come to church and you are singing when you come to church and you kneel down and you lift up your hands and say you are the reason why i live people may think you are too known but they don't understand that when you love much god forgives you much Number two, first Corinthians chapter two, verse nine. But as it is written, I has not seen, neither has ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. So you find out that when there are people who love God, he's saying that there are things that people have not seen, but I'll reveal them to you. God will give you new ideas, God will give you wisdom, God will show you things that other people don't know. Why? Because you love him what other people don't know god is prepared to reveal to you god will share his secret things with you because you love him in your intimacy with god god will begin to speak with you and show you even things to come your future is going to be secure you will have wisdom you will have the power to get wealth you will have ideas god will bring people into your life to help you because you love him finally romans chapter 8 verse 28 romans chapter 8 verse 28 it says and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and we know and we know God is saying that there is something you must know you mustn't just hear about it you mustn't just watch other people testify about it he's saying that and I know that all things all of them sometimes you are going through a bad patch in your life even you don't understand it but I know that all of them are working together for my good because I love God not because I went to school not because I have good parents because I love God I'm here to declare to you in the month of January in the month of February in the month of March April May June July August September October November December it doesn't matter what you go through you may be in prison at one point but I know that it will work together for your good you may not have food to eat now but I know that it will work together for your good you may go through rejection but I'm here to tell you all things will work together for your good even if you lose a job I'm here to announce to you in the year 2019 all things will work together for your good I had a friend in the year 2001 or something when 9-11 happened he said he had applied for a job and they were going to employ him and somehow it was the job he was looking for he went for the interview they shortlisted him last minute for some reason they just said they were not going to take him again he called me from the US he was angry why has God disappointed me? Why has God left me? I've paid my tithe. I go to church. I serve God. But some way, somehow, God has disappointed me and has given the job to another person. Six months after, the Twin Towers were blown. 
Then I called him back and I said, Do you remember the story you told me? God was actually delivering you six months in advance, but you had no idea. And I'm here to tell you, whatever you go through, it will work together for your good. Once you love the Lord, the devil cannot defeat you. Your enemies cannot stop you. Everything is by divine orchestration. The lines will fall unto you in pleasant places. In the month of January, it shall work together for your good. In the month of February, it shall work together for your good. In the month of March, something is going to work for your good. April will work together for your good. May will work together for your good. June will work together for your good. July we will work together for your good. August will work together for your good. September, October, November, December. I declare unto somebody here that 2019 it is working together for your good. Begin to declare it is working for my good. It is working for my good. Begin to declare 2019 it is working together for my good. It is working together for my good. 2019 we are going to love God with all our hearts. We are going to love ourselves. And we are going to love one another. Say, I commit myself to love God with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my heart. Say, I commit myself to serve God in Jesus' name. I commit myself to personal development. I shall be what God wants me to be spiritually financially socially I shall be bigger better greater more glorious I shall be bigger better greater more glorious I shall be light I shall be salt in my generation today by the wisdom of God I receive power for wealth I receive solutions to my generation I declare all things all things shall work together for my good in this year 2019 I declare glory favor grace is coming down this is my year of love my testimony is released my breakthrough is here my light has come the glory is all around glory glory financial glory spiritual glory social glory employment glory in my relationships my light has come this is my year of love in Jesus name hello precious one we wish to extend a warm invitation to you to join us for any of our Sunday services at the PMI King's Temple our services are specially designed to specifically meet your needs and draw you closer to have fellowship with God in His presence. You are welcome to join us in person at 6.15 a.m. for the morning glory service, at 7.30 a.m. for the second service, which is also streamed live across all our social media platforms, and at 9.45 a.m. for the third service. We also wish to invite you to join us for the Living Manor, our weekday Bible teaching service, which comes off every Tuesday at 6 p.m., and Thursday at 6.30 p.m. in person and online, respectively. On Fridays, we gather before our Father's altar at 6 p.m. to pray and seek His faith for divine encounters. The King has a special place for you. Don't come alone. You surely will be blessed by the Word of God. In Jesus' name, God richly bless you. Thank you for listening to Rhema Power with Reverend Me Bernard Adiakwa. We hope you've been blessed. For further information, contact 0303-931-841. Tune in next week for another insightful teaching on Rhema Power.